In this HVACR training video, we're going over direct spark ignition for gas furnaces, and we've pulled out this combustion chamber so you can more easily see what's going on. And you see our spark rods, our flame rod, our ignition control module, our transformer, our thermostat, and our gas valve. We're going to be going over the operation and the troubleshooting coming up. Here you have an ignition control module, and that differs from an integrated furnace control with a spark ignition because this handles the blower motor as well. This specifically handles only the ignition part, so that's why we have this hooked up here. And so this is made for direct spark ignition, and so we have our spark rod over here. And so there's no pilot on this. Direct spark means that you are allowing gas through each of these five orifices, and it's allowing to, to come up. It's mixing with the air, and then you have your fuel and air mixture. It's going to be ignited over here. The flame is going to travel across these burner retention heads over to this flame rod, and then you're gonna prove that there's a flame over on this side. That verifies that all of your burner tubes have a flame across it, and so that is a verification, and then you're gonna have a direct current microamp signal verifying that there's a flame on the GND. And so right here, you have your spark wire, and this is a, a very thick uh, rubber coating on the outside of this, and the whole point is to not allow that to a spark anywhere other than where it's meant to be right here. So it's a it's an insulator. Anyway, let's uh let's backtrack here for a sec. We have our 24 volt transformer. So we have 120 volt on this side, 24 volt on this side. We have our common wire attached to TR. So TR is for transformer, common for transformer. And then you have your 24 volt hot going through a three amp fuse and then over to the R terminal inside the thermostat face. And then you see we have W connected here. Anytime that you have heat calling in your thermostat, what's going to happen is R and W are going to touch. And so we have these little magnet jumpers, and we're going to be connecting R and W right here. And so I'm going to leave that off for now. And so you're going to have 24 volt power on your W wire. It's going to go through any safety devices, such as a flame rollout switch or a high temperature limit switch, and then it's gonna come over to the TH, and so that means thermostat. And so you have power on the TH, and you're common for the path back on the TR, that's gonna power this direct spark ignition module right here. So just say your heat exchanger was warming up and the blower motor was not turning on, this high temperature limit switch that would be in series right here would open up the electrical circuit. This little um, flame rollout switch, this is going to pop if you had the flame roll back. And that would be due to a safety concern such as a crack in the heat exchanger or something like that. And that's a serious concern, so make sure to not just keep pressing this button in to reset it. You gotta make sure that there's no safety hazards present. After you get your 24 volts at your TH and TR, you're gonna be sending alternating current through this wire over to your spark rod. And it's gonna jump from here over to the other rod, and that's because it's very high voltage. So you'll have probably about 10,000 volts and it's gonna jump from one to the other rod. Now this second rod is the ground wire. And by the way, this, this whole thing is electrically off right now. So this wire is insulated and it comes over to the rod and then there's ceramic stopping the uh, alternating current from jumping to this ground. And then it's gonna come up here. And so this is a two rod setup. If you have a single rod setup, it might jump from here over to the burner retention head in order to ignite the fuel gas and air mixture. So anyway, after this sparks for maybe three or four seconds, your ignition control module is gonna allow 24 volts to your direct ignition gas valve. And so it's gonna have 24 volts on this, and then on your common, your valve slash common, that's gonna be the path back. And so let's take a look at your gas valve. So you're gonna have your alternating current present at the the R wire, and then you have your blue wire as the common, and that's your path back over to here. Now TR, your transformer common and your valve common, those are touching, and so they are internally connected inside this uh, ignition control module here. After that occurs, you have about five seconds to prove that there's a flame, and so you're going to allow your gas flow to come through, so we have propane in the gas line back here. It comes through the gas valve over to each one of these orifices. It's gonna mix with the air, come up, get ignited, and then your flame's gonna travel across the top right here over to your rod. And this rod is always gonna have alternating current traveling to this rod right here. And so the flame is going to uh, be the closing pathway between the rod and this ground frame. 
uh, but what's going to happen is it's going to rectify the alternating current and so you're going to have direct current traveling from the rod to the ground frame on the burner retention head and then you're going to have on this GND wire a small DC microamp signal heading back to the ignition control module in order to verify that there is a flame present. If there's no flame present then maybe all these burner tubes have not ignited and so you just have gas spilling in here and so that's why this is going to shut off the power to the gas valve then. And so this is going to have alternating current anytime that this has power to it. And so on a furnace with an integrated furnace control module like this, you're, anytime you have power to the furnace, you're going to have high voltage alternating current on your flame rod. Now, it may be 50 volts to 180 volts. It depends on the module itself. And remember, we just have 24 volts powering this module. So the long and short is you just don't want to touch this uh, because even if there's no flame present, uh, this may have alternating current ready on it and so you don't want to touch it. So anyway that's how that works and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn this system on and we're going to first check for our high voltage at our flame rod. So remember your flame rod is nothing but a stainless steel rod and you have ceramic here and that's protecting it from touching the ground. And so even though this says sense really all that's happening is you're sending high voltage over to your flame rod and so then you're getting a sensing signal actually on the GND, which is your ground wire. So this is not just to, to, for a safety device, just to ground your ignition module. This is actually the flame proving wire over here on the GND. So what we're gonna do first is, let's just measure for alternating current. And we're gonna measure that on our flame rod. I just wanna show you that anytime we have voltage present, we're going to have voltage on the flame rod. So we're going to put this on our R, we're going to turn the power on. And so this is the same thing that's going to happen anytime you turn your thermostat on in heating mode and turn the temperature up. Your R and W touch, that's it. Now you saw that little light flash and so it may wait about say 10 seconds uh, and then after that it's going to allow your high voltage over to the spark rod. What I wanted you to know is that we have 120 volts present. And so if we disconnect right here, we have no power to this module. But when I put this back on again, you immediately have 125 volts present. Okay, so now that we know that that is present, I'm just taking the power off of the module. So we have no voltage over here, so it's safe. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire my multimeter in series with my flame rod. I'm going to do this first, but then after that, I'm going to measure it over on my GND. And so what we're going to do is we're going to be measuring for DC microamps. I'm going to turn this back on again. So as you can see, we're measuring about 4.2 microamps. And so that's proving that there's a flame present and see what happens when we disconnect right here. It's going to shut it off. And that's because the flame is not being proven right now. And so say you only had your flame being lit over to here and maybe these burner retention heads were rusty. What's going to happen is it's only going to allow power to your gas valve for a brief amount of time and it's going to shut it off because it, it knows that there is no flame present over on this side. So either the gas didn't get ignited at all or it didn't make it across the pathway. So what I'm going to do, we'll, we'll wait for a sec here. Okay, so we know that we do not have any proving of the flame happening. And so I'm going to plug this back in. I want to show you what happens when I disconnect the ground wire. We'll first measure our microamp signal over here, and then after that, we will disconnect it. So as you can see over here, we're measuring five DC microamps. So we have a good signal. If this signal was down, say, below two, maybe it was like one or something like that, that's getting on the lower end, and you may have maybe rusty burner heads or you may have a problem with your ground wire, but let's just see what happens when we disconnect our GND. 
you see that our flame went out. So that shows you that this is the flame proving wire coming back to the ignition control module. And so once again, you always want to make sure that you have a good uh, ground right here on your combustion chamber and that this is tight onto the ignition control module. Uh, another thing that could happen is your, your burner tubes up top, they could be rusty and that could be uh, stopping some of the signal from getting through. So let's see what happens when I disconnect this. So if you have a low microamp signal due to a rusty burner head or uh, something, maybe the flame rod is melted or burnt or it has uh, carbon dust all on the outside of it, that's a problem. So I'm going to disconnect this and so we're safe now. And so you're going to want to make sure to turn the power off to the system, verify it by testing power with your multimeter, and then you can take your flame rod out, clean it with non-soap steel wool or a brittle pad or something like that. But the whole point is you want to have this clean and it's got to sit right in front of the burner retention head. And also these heads may need to be cleaned. If this little uh, channel right here is rusted solid, like on an outdoor package unit, you may have to wire brush it. But the problem is you don't want to wire brush it too much. You may want to just order new burner tubes so it has that nice galvanized finish. Let's just go ahead and plug our GND back in. As far as your spark wire is concerned, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come in close and look at the spark. And the whole point is that your spark is occurring over here. And so let's see what happens when we pull this wire out you're still going to hear the spark and it's going to be internally sparking in here and that's not going to be helping us ignite the flame and so I want to show you what that sounds like. So it's sparking inside the module not over at the uh, spark rods over here and so it was initially uh, sparking on the inside of here and then it shut off what was also happening is after this was sparking, the gas was actually coming out of the orifices. So the gas valve was powered, but because there was no flame proven with the flame rod and the GND, it stopped the power to the valve and also power to the spark rod. And so I'm going to turn the power off again. So this insulation right here, if this were to rub on the frame right here that would be a problem and it would spark right here so us as a technician we want to listen for where the spark is taking place is it is it taking place over at the ignition control module meaning that this wire is broken or does it sound like it's happening over in the combustion chamber so remember you normally can't see up in here you can look at it from the back see if you can see a spark occurring you want to make sure that this is not rubbing over here anywhere and to make sure that it's not sparking over here so you want to listen for where that spark is occurring. You can also take this off with the power off to the system and verified. You can take this off and make sure that your spark gap is roughly at about an eighth of an inch. As you can see right here, it says 7 64ths of an inch. So right about an eighth of an inch. So if you have 10,000 volts, it jumps right across your eighth inch gap as well. Uh, maybe your rod just jumps from here over to the burner retention head and that's how it ignites it. Uh, so if that's a single rod setup, that's how that would work. You just want to make sure that this rod isn't melted and kind of bent out of shape because that could be the problem. That's why maybe that the gas is not being ignited. So it could be several reasons. If, if this is not lighting, it could be the gas pressure. Maybe you don't have your, your voltage being sent over. So we're right here on our valve common and our valve and so that would be your 24 volts being sent over to your your gas valve so you could have maybe the gas valve is not allowing uh, gas through or maybe you have cobwebs or something like that spiders uh, maybe over blocking these orifices that's a definite thing that could happen on a on a package unit you could be sparking here or you could not be sparking there these burner retention heads may be rusted shut uh, the channel right here could be rusted. So that's all things that could happen with your spark ignition. And so then you have your flame proving device, which we already covered. And if this burner retention head was very rusty, once again, that could act as an insulator. And so you have your alternating current being present on the, the flame rod, and then it rectifies to direct current. Basically, you're completing the circuit by connecting from the rod to the burner retention head, 
and then the ground frame is the electrical circuit over to the GND and then you're going to get a small DC microamp signal over here. So a small amount of work is being done through the flame during the rectification process and that's the microamp signal that you're measuring. And so you want to make sure that these are clean and just replace them if they are not. So that's how this works. And let me just show you what happens if we were to check for voltage. You want to make sure if there's nothing happening or maybe there's no lights being lit, you want to make sure that you're getting your 24 volts over to your ignition control module. And so we'll come right over here to the TH and the TR. So now we're measuring for alternating current. So we're measuring voltage on our TR and TH. So if there's nothing happening at your module, uh, then you have another problem maybe with a sensor being open or something like that. So that's the first thing that you might want to check. Make sure you have your 27 volts over to your ignition control module. And then you're going to wait and see if you have your 24 volts going over to your gas valve after your spark igniter uh, starts clicking. So you can see we have our 26 volts over to the gas valve. If you have low voltage, that will be another indication that maybe you're not sending enough power over to your gas valve. Uh, maybe there's some electrical resistance in the wires. Maybe there's a cut in the wire or something like that. And that's why there's no gas going through. So that could be an issue as well. So I hope this video has helped you understand how spark ignition works and how an ignition control module works. Some ignition control modules are always powered with 120 volts, or some may also just have 24 volts all the time. It just depends on the type that you have. So if you want to learn more about spark ignition and different types of ignition, I have other videos linked down in the description section below. I also have articles over at our website at acservicetech.com, and also check out our new book on inverter mini splits over at our website at acservicetech.com store. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.